welcome back to another episode of In Depth. My name is Luke Hardacre and I'm a surf coach at Ombi. If you're new to Ombi, we take a look at surfing from the perspective of ocean, mind, body, and equipment. In this podcast, it's all about straight to the point tips, things that you can take away and implement to your surfing straight away, or things that will change the way you view your surfing. This week's episode is entirely about that something that's going to make you view surfing in a different way so that you can understand a little bit better and apply this back to yourself. So there is this saying at Ombi that we have where it is, you already know how to move, you just haven't applied it to surfing yet. Confusing, right? So what does this actually mean? The point of this is that through everyday movements and things we do day in and day out we know how to be balanced we know how to move twist compress extend lift all these different things and that all we need to do for our surfing to improve is apply those foundations of simple and effective movement to surfing We know that through this everyday movement that the easiest, the most efficient way to do these things is, you know, straight back, various different, you know, we already know how to do these movements. That's the point. So why is it that when we go out surfing, it's like we're hit with a stupid stick or we feel like we're starting to learn to walk and balance again, yet take us out of the water. We know how to do these things and we can do it on command anytime. Is it just because that we're now in water and we're moving forward? And to that I say no, it, that doesn't change the fundamentals of good balance and coordination. It just makes it harder. It's just a slight application of it, but the foundations are still the same. A big part of that answering that initial, always that question will come up is it's finding balance and matching the direction and momentum. So if we now think about being in water, it's now an unstable surface, but that just means the surface you're on will respond more easily to bad balances and changes to your center of gravity. This forward momentum that we have when you're surfing means you need to coordinate your body to match the direction of that momentum. What I mean by this is if you're moving forwards, all of your body, your mass, your movements should be moving in that similar direction or making slight variances to it. You're not jumping in the opposite direction. It's like jumping out of a moving car. You wanna do it and roll and keep moving forwards. So if you think about it this way, you'll see a heap of surfers struggling on their pop-up. As they get up, they get up violently. And I'm saying yes, violently. There's nothing smooth about it. And their arms are thrown up upwards, backwards, behind them to the side, wherever, their arms are violently thrown in a direction. If your board is moving forwards and it's having that push from the wave and all of a sudden you throw your weight and your arms in a different direction, what is this gonna do to your balance and center of gravity? What you see is these surfers, they're falling in the direction of their arms. They're throwing themselves off balance almost by purpose yet they're unaware of it. And a lot of that comes down to control, but that's what's happening. You're moving forwards and now all of a sudden you're throwing your weight in a different direction your body wants to follow and then you struggle to rebalance and control that. So what you should be doing in this situation is what we call the walk-up, which I'm going to walk through for all this. And you should be walking up with your entire body in the direction you're traveling. And this goes to pretty much everything you do when you're surfing head, arms, shoulders, hips, knees, all aiming roughly in the direction of momentum you are going. This is gonna keep you balanced and in control. Now, as you get more advanced, there is so much nuance to surfing and there will be times where you tweak this. But the basic fundamentals is if you want your body stacked, aligned, moving with purpose. That's what it comes down to. So if we think about fixing your pop-up, We're going to tie this back into how you already know how to move and you just haven't applied it to surfing yet. So think about your pop-up. In what part of your everyday life or other scenarios is this explosive pop-up used? 
And does that even seem functional? I, I hope you can think of what I'm thinking of. And we're thinking these people who go from laying on the ground to quickly jumping up to their feet. Now, the other side of this is if it was functional, which it's not, firstly, but if it was functional, can you do it in the reverse order? Can you get down to the ground from jumping to suddenly laying, being on your feet, like on your stomach? That's just not a movement you ever want to do. It's not good biomechanics. It's not coordinated and controlled. The harsh reality of this is like, as you see, you're going to see a lot of people doing this explosive pop-up. And they usually have no control, no balance, and they are going to often end up in poo man stance. As they haven't allowed for space for their body to efficiently and smoothly move into the right position and find that stance. What we're talking about here is think pop-up to lock-up. Stuck in a bad stance and unable to move out of it. So here's where this gets annoying. You already know a better way to do this. You already know a better way to get up to your feet on a surfboard. You just haven't applied it to surfing yet. It's what we call the walk up and that's because it's so simple. And you're going to do this probably every day, every couple days, whatever it is. You're gonna, you've done this a million times and it's so simple. And when we face-to-face -face coach someone to do this, there's always this moment of like, are you serious? That, that, that's what I'm doing. And I'm like, yeah, that is, that is it. It's super frustrating to teach someone because they always come back with just like, what? And I'm like, yep, just, just do that. Simple. So if you've got space around you, I want you to try this. All it is, is you're laying down on the ground on your stomach. And I just want you to find some space where there's an object, you know, waist, head high somewhere, wherever it is. Further in the room, it's an object, it's a wall, doesn't matter where it is, just somewhere in your knee area. And from that laying down position, I don't want you to think about this. I just want you to go from laying on the ground, looking at that object of where you want to go or the wall, and walk up, touch it, or grab it. That's it. The point of this is you want to do this when you start thinking about this is to walk forward your head held high, your entire body is coordinating forwards to the direction you want to go. And you're always looking to where you want to go. So by doing this movement and taking out of surfing and just saying, get up off the ground, walk a couple meters forward, touch something, you're thinking about touching the thing. You're not thinking about everything else that's going on. And your body just moves in the most simple and effective way possible. Because you've done it a million times. You did it as a baby, you've done it as a kid. If you played sports and you fell over, you did it again. There's so many times you've done this movement and it works. The other side to this, I can guarantee most people aren't going to stuff this up. The only way you stuff this up is if you're unsure of the commands, which is more on me than you. When it's just lay on the floor, get up and walk, it's pretty hard to stuff it up. Now, if you've got mobility issues, flexibility issues, that's a different thing, strength issues. So then how does this convert to surfing. It's the same thing. Back foot first, not front foot. Simply because back foot first means you get up, matching the direction and momentum. You're pushing off the back foot, pushing forwards. Front foot or getting up off the knees means you get up forwards and then push up backwards to find space for the back foot. It throws you off balance. And you're pushing your weight slightly against the direction of momentum. It can work, but you might find it harder to balance. And then you've got to deal with that different momentum change. If you can't do back foot first, as I said before, maybe an issue of flexibility, mobility, strength, any of those things. So if it's technique, look up, lift the hips, chin up, make space for the body to move. You have to create space with your body. I implore you to try this, play it out, fool around on the floor, being like, how can I make space for my legs to come through easier? And then it's a case of how can I train this, break the bad habits, implement this into my surfing. You start going down that rabbit hole. So do this again. 
I want you to convert this to your surfing. And it's the exact same movement, but instead of walking forwards to touch the wall, you're just taking that first initial step with your front foot. You're placing the back foot down, the front foot, and that's that one step. But while you're doing this, I want you to look forward. I want you to keep looking at the wall or the object that you were doing before. If you look down, you're going to project your weight down. You're going to throw your center of gravity off. If you were doing this to walk to the wall, you wouldn't do that. You just keep walking, get up and go. So don't look down during the pop-up. I'm going to cover this in a whole other podcast episode where it's basically 99% of people don't have a pop-up problem. They have a looking problem. So what this means is that if you can do this walk up and you can simplify it, you already know how to move. You just haven't applied it to surfing. So I want you to do these kind of movements that we know and connect them to the outcome you want in your surfing. So the walk up's a really easy example, one that people struggle with a lot. It's the most common thing that people struggle with. But everything else in your surfing, even as you get more advanced, you're applying movements you've done a million and one times. It's just the nuance of that movement, the timing, positioning, everything else. That's where surfing gets really hard. Carrying on from there, let's expand this to the rest of your surfing. Stance, you know already you want a nice neutral stance. Even if you're not aware of it in your surfing, back straight, it's going to give you good balance. We do this every day, and yet we see so many surfers bent to the hips, bent over, struggling for balance. You're going to often notice these surfers doing a lot, but nothing happening. Then when the wave slows down, they give up and suddenly they improve their stance. The back straightens and they do less. All of a sudden the balance and their control is infinitely better, but they're more interested in kicking out than finally propping surfing. They're now in the position they want to be in, but their body language and everything else says I've given up. It's infuriating to watch. And it's such an interesting concept for to see people go through. So if you find this as you, play around with that. If you give up, you finally straighten the back, you let go, realize you can be in that position and respond better to the wave. You're giving yourself more time. What I mean by this concept of more time, you are now in a position to better move. From that position, you know it's the best way to start a lean, a twist, a compress, a lunge, a lift. If you want to lift something up, you know we don't want to be bent at the hips. If you want to compress, do any of these, do lunges. It all starts from a nice, neutral posture. So we've done this a million times. Bend into the knees, not at the hips. We know it, yada, yada, yada. I'm not your physio, osteopath, anyone like that, but... We know it time and time again. It's drilled into us. This is what we want to do. We know it. We know it's better. We know it's better biomechanically. We know it's more functional. And we know it has better balance, but we don't do it in surfing. It's a cliche to surf coaches at this point. So how does this then impact your surfing? So the whole idea of this concept, the reason I want to do this episode because it's kind of a fundamental part of theory and understanding of things that surfing doesn't have to be as hard as what it is. Surfing's a very hard sport. I'm not sugarcoating that. But we know about these movements and we've experienced them and we can apply them. And you might see people who have done yoga and they're really good at it and they might find that just with focusing on the right technique of just looking up, creating space with the hips, they don't have a pop-up problem. It's more just the mental side of things. So again, tying this back, what I want you to have is this awareness of movement. And that you're going to start noticing this in other surfaces a lot. But where this needs to apply the most is your movement and your land-based training. So film yourself. Moving, doing it, skating, whatever. And I just want you to think, is there a more basic movement to this? Can I move better? Am I in that position? Does it look good? This is a way to help self-coach, self-identify your own problems, identify other surfers' problems and be like, oh, that surfer's doing a really good cutback. Why does mine look like crap? 
like, oh, their back's up straight. They're moving really well. They're holding the turn, things like this. It goes down a very deep rabbit hole. But this basic understanding is so powerful to connect you to the next steps in your surfing. When you're having a go at this, I want you to try it in bad positions. I've said this a million one times. I'm a broken record at this point. But if you're doing something in surfing, I want you to feel the good and feel the bad. You need to understand and physically act it out and be like, that is why that feels bad. I can understand that. If you can't understand it, you're not taking on the learning experience. And that's detrimental to you wanting to improve. Time effective. We're all time poor in this world at this rate. But you need to play with your surfing. Find the film, the sweet spot. I want you to go through the extremes to feel the bad and understand why it's bad and feel the good and understand why it's good. So if you get a video of your land training or your surfing and you see this in your surfing, think about what would look better and what would that better surfing look like? Or analyze how are you moving? And if it just looks wrong, are you following basic fundamentals of movement? Are you even twisting, leaning, compressing? That is a quiet... It seems obvious. There's a lot of people who will be like, what's wrong with my cutback? I'm like, you're literally not even twisting. Like you're not turning. Parts of your body are, but your hips and your shoulders, the main part of your twist is not twisting. If that makes sense to you. So when you look back and you're like, what's stopping that? Then you need to start playing around with it and understanding why is that twist not happening? Another really good example of this is quite often skating, surfing, compressing and extending. So coming down low and lifting up to create speed, space, getting up the top of the wave, top of the ramp. Surfers are going to move their arms a lot, but the legs, the part that actually compresses and extends and creates lift, barely even moves. So if this is you, bring the movement back to basics and think, if I'm trying to get lower, and then lift up. How would I do that outside of surfing? And then how can I apply it back to what I'm doing and play with it? So for a lot of people, the one bit of advice is exaggerate the movement. Because if you're not doing it, and you don't know how to, make it feel like you're doing it over the top. Just exaggerate the movement. Because when you exaggerate it, you're probably going to start moving at like 70%. And then you start feeling it. You're playing with the extremes and then finding new extremes. So I hear you, I get it. You're probably sitting there going, man, you're making this stuff sound so simple, but surfing is bloody hard. And I hear you, because there is a really important reason why we struggle with these things. Why that even though we know the basic fundamental movements, we understand how they work, we understand how to do them, we've done them a million times in our life, We cannot for the life of us do it in the surf. Why? It's a big issue because it's all based around stress. Oh, I'm also another broken record. Stress, 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 move well, play with it, yada, yada, yada. That's me. That's what we talk about most of the time here. But the big issue with this and why it feels like we're hit with a stupid stick all the time and we come off and it makes us just go, what the f***? That experience there has so much more to do with where your head's at and how that impacts your actions, thoughts, and your movements. And it's because of the stimulus, the conditions, the thoughts, fears, tensions, anxieties. It's the environment, the other surfers, the list goes on. You're responding to stimulus. And what that's doing is putting you either into freeze, flight, or fight. These are three basic parts of survival instincts in all of us. And this is going to be next week's podcast episode. I'm going to be taking a dive into some of the really important concepts within the Ombi method. So if you haven't done that yet, you can go links in the show notes. It's completely free. It's about 30 odd videos about how to understand where your surfing's at, looking at it through beginner, intermediate, advanced levels, the lines you take, you already know how to move. I'm going to be talking about the next four or five episodes about some really amazing stuff within there about how it can help you understand your own surfing and how you can follow along with the training or you can apply this back to wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And that's the main thing is that 
all this is applicable to anything you're doing in your surfing. To wrap this episode up, again, there's some things in here for you to try, but this is very much just information for you to download. Sleep on it, think about it. Just take this understanding into things when you try and look at surfing. It's really just to help you see surfing in a different way, to help you understand the more basics of it. Because what's really always kind of frustrated me about surfing from the age of five learning to now in my mid thirties is, you want to go learn golf? Go to the golf course. They'll be there someone who teaches you. They tell you the fundamentals of movement, how to get your swing right. For the love of God, I cannot swing a golf club. Uh, but I felt like I could try and work on that and I just didn't have early success, so I gave up. But surfing is tough. There's so little information, which is what Ombi we're trying to do is put so much out of there, pay it forward and give this out. But when you start applying this, it really helps clue in some of the gaps about why things aren't working for you, why they work for others. It's an amazing thing. I'm rambling at this point, but I just, this is one of the most exciting concepts in surfing for me is just to simplify it. It becomes so easy. Other than that, it would mean the world to me if you left a review for this podcast, if you've been loving it. If you ever want to leave a podcast suggestion, you'll find that in the show notes. I'll be going through them very quickly and doing more and more of the suggestions as well. And if there's anything that you ever want to reach out on, you can head to info at ombi.co. If you'd like to do the Ombi training, you can start a free trial. Just links in the show notes as well. We've got programs for beginners, intermediates. Those are both structured follow-along programs. Or you can jump into our monthly challenges, which don't actually have to be across a month. You can do them at your own pace. But those are, again, a structured training approach to one maneuver at a time. And it's broken down for beginners, intermediates, advanced. They're amazing. You can join the community. Anyways, I will see you next episode where we go through the three Fs. What the 